Well, it's a pretty hot day. So I'm going to be spraying myself down here. Okay, for today's episode, get ready, people. It's about to get weird, right? I don't know. In my circle, we talk about what's happening in the news and what we see on social media. And I'm not just talking about, you know, the mainstream. I'm talking about all types of news. I think a lot of us are seeing it on social media, shorts, reels. We got blue painted roofs. We got chaos in our 50th state. We got strange reports about lasers coming down from the sky. That's just too much even to comprehend. Oh my gosh. And leaders who no longer blink. Yes, I said blink. They're no longer blinking. What's going on? Well, if it gets freaky bad, what will we do? Where will we go? How should we prepare? And these are questions for everyone, not just van dwellers, even those in houses. Now, as a van dweller, you know, and others, we can drive anywhere at any time as long as we have fuel in our tape. We live in our vehicles. Everything we own is packed and ready to go. Our suitcase is always packed. Now, the next question is, where should they go? Where should they drive? Well, these are familiar questions. You know, for anybody who's traveled in their van, where are you going to go? Especially in chaos. So let me make note, when I use the word van, I'm including all types of vehicles. Vans, cars, minivans, high tops, build-outs, non-build-outs, RVs, larger vans, Class A's, Class C's, Class B's. <laughs> If there truly is a financial collapse, oh my gosh, down the road and social disorder, these questions are going to be foremost in everybody's minds, mine, yours, them, and all who live in their vans. So in this episode, I want to discuss why you might want to move to another location. I mean, we talk about this. This is also pertinent to house dwellers who find themselves in the middle of of a big fat mess. <laughs> I know. So picking the right time to move on down the road will be crucial for your safety and your resources. Now, the key idea is to have a system to decide where you should move to and the choices available, like where are you gonna go? When you, everybody's got something different going on, right? Now, a few months ago, you know, I asked this same question more deeply than I ever asked before. There was talk of financial collapse and, you know, things like that. So where should I go in the coming months? So after much thought, I decided to move into higher elevation because obviously it was summertime. Now, nomads typically move into higher elevations rather than choosing a place using north and south, north and south. Now that method of thinking, I mean, higher elevations result in cooler temperatures. You know, that plays a really key role in comfortable climate, but north and south comes into play as well. It snows in the north states of America during the winter. I mean, duh, right? And it would seem that during the summer, North and South would be correct indicators of temperature, but that's not always the case. So if you think about it, like Idaho, for example, receives a lot of snow in the winter, but during the summer months, it also really gets hot in Idaho, in parts of it, yeah. And it can be really uncomfortable, but this is also due to elevation when you're dealing with the summer. So let's discuss moving around to avoid chaos and staying safe in the event there is a financial collapse or a social collapse in, in our society. If things get weird and there is a financial crisis, there will be social chaos, I guarantee it. There are choices and each individual will have to find their own unique needs. They're gonna to have to decide what are their needs and it will help them decide what areas they want to park their vehicles if you're a nomad. In the city, outside the city, far into the forest. I mean, these are things that uh, we all talk about as nomads. Now, here's a refresher course, right? The Bureau of Land Management, it is better known as BLM, is available mostly in the western states, and it is free of charge to stay typically 14 days. There is little, if any, amenities. I've stayed on BLM many times, so, um, and all over the place. 
Um, before arriving, what I do is I shop for what I need during my two week stay. There is little need to run into town, near town during that time. Now, there's apps that will help you find BLM and other free land to park on. Search for these apps on your phone. Number one, free roam. Number two, boondocking and more. Number three, recreation.gov. And number four, BLM land map guide. And number five, U.S. public lands. Okay. Now, the eastern half of the United States does not really have much BLM, if any at all. What they have is the Corps of Engineering. The Corps owns and manages about 12 million acres of real estate open to public hunting and fishing. I have never stayed on the Corps of Engineering land, but I do have friends who have used this land regularly, and they enjoy it. Okay, well, campsites. So they're a possibility, but they do cost money. They can range from anywhere from $5 to $50 a night. The greatest advantage to a campsite is the amenities. Now, in most cases, they supply electricity, toilets, showers, and laundry facilities. So that's pretty cool. I do like, at least they'll provide a picnic table. I'm not certain whether campsites will be desirable choice during a disaster or a collapse. There may be no one there to work as a camp host and the land most likely will be blocked off during such events to keep people out. But still, <laughs> there may be many homeless people in, in cars or on foot that have moved into the campsites because they can and they'll do it free of charge. And this goes for BLM and, and Corps of Engineering land too. I mean, a lot of people are just gonna move in. They're just gonna ignore any signs and just go if there's chaos. And it's gonna be a difficult time for the authorities to patrol these areas officially. It's not gonna be enough people to do it. But in normal times, as it's happening really at the moment, city life is my go-to place for amenities facilities and easy parking overnight. I enjoy good cell reception. That's important to me. Now there are Walmarts everywhere. Gyms are plentiful for workouts and showers. I can always find a place to park at night, either at a Cracker Barrel, Bass Pro Shop, Walmart, or along the street in a quiet neighborhood that I've chosen. I've kind of scoped out and chosen. Now I also enjoy being near other people. This isn't always the case for many nomads. They want to be out in the wild in isolation. I get that. We're all different. City life can make many nomads very nervous, but not me. I love being in the city or, or a larger town and enjoy all that it has to offer. Let's play a scenario game. Imagine there is a rumor of a near financial collapse. You hear rumblings of the dollar falling. You experience inflation climbing higher and higher. Fuel prices are actually really getting higher than you could ever imagine. Digital currency could, could totally reset our social order. Now, do you want to be in a city at that time? At the serious rumor stage, I will want to be close. And here's why. I would want to be close to a city, right? I can easily get out of the city before everything turns ugly. As long as I keep my eyes and my ears open, I will have firsthand knowledge what's about to go down. If I genuinely believe there is a collapse in the near future, I can stay close to a Walmart and watch the shelves daily, because that's gonna be a real indicator. A smart nomad will keep their vans filled with gasoline at all times. And this is going to happen probably near a city or, you know, a town. I could park overnight close to a facility and I could check the shelves daily. I could watch people's behaviors and check the news. Not all news is dependable, but my friends and my social connections will keep me abreast of what's happening in their parts of the country and vice versa. But during an actual collapse, whether it's financial or social, city life is not the best place to be. City life is a disaster during any calamity, but before the event occurs, city life can supply benefits that isolation just doesn't offer. How are you gonna go into resupply because you need to really keep those going? Now, seasoned nomads have recently bought land outside of towns and cities. This plot of land is undeveloped land, and in the recent past, it's been inexpensive to purchase. 
There are no amenities going on on this land, and in most cases, no roads to get to the land, other than a four-wheel drive vehicle. Now, developing this land is totally up to the buyer, and this can take time. I've thought about it. I've been given advice to buy a small area of land now, so I can go park on this land. And if, if there is a financial breakdown, I thought about it, but I'm not certain it would help if a disaster were right around the corner. Would I have time? I need time to get permits, bulldoze a road, build a small overhang shelter, and stock supplies that I need for the long haul. I would need food, water, necessities, and many other items for survival if I was isolated on this land. It's a great idea, though. Nomads are busy in real time getting their newly purchased land ready to hunker down on. I think that's great. It's a super idea for long term. There may or may not be any disaster in the very near future, but rumors are there and this land could be enjoyed for years to come if there is nothing going down. So it's a good idea in theory. Being near family is another wonderful choice. Parking near parents, children, close friends during a time of collapse is the best choice unless it's in a very, very large city. Your family and your friends may find themselves in harm's way during social disorder. They need to begin to prepare to move to a safer setting for protection. So there are many options where to go. Everyone has a unique need and desire where they want to be. A city environment, small town, BLM, campsite, Corps of Engineering, buying a parcel of land, friends and relatives, their driveways, hiding out in the forest or a mountain. These are all options that people, I know nomads, that they, they really do think about all this stuff. I have nomad friends across the U.S. Each one has a particular idea what comfortable nomad life is and where they enjoy spending their time. Some enjoy the outdoors exclusively and some enjoy the city life while others enjoy both at different times of the year. It's sort of me, although I lean towards the city and towns. You will discover your own unique taste and needs once you start really thinking about it because some of you have to get out here because of evictions or whatever. So I used the filter system and I created for me to decide where I wanted to be during each state of a possible disaster and financial collapse. So Here's my filter system. I decided which place I ultimately wanted to live if something terrible went wrong in our society. And I considered the factors. So here they are, a state by state, water supply, politics, climate, season, access to facilities, friends and family, food supply, access to hunting and fishing, friendly or hostile. How much fuel would it take to get there to my ultimate place where I want to be. So I chose one area each of two possible stages of a financial collapse. Now so the filter system you can filter out what you don't want and that will eliminate everything that you really don't want. So fuel prices were a key component in my decision. So if gasoline prices continue to climb it could end up being rationed. So this isn't new to society, it's happened before. So I wanted to be less than one tank of gasoline away from my ultimate destination of choice. Does that make sense? Yeah. So climate is another factor in my selection. It might be too hot or too cold to move to that location at this time. Therefore, I chose a location that had a good climate and was less than one fuel tank away. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I have discussed this situation with a close friend who is more of a woodsman type than I am. He knows how to hunt and fish and prefers being away from other people during a social collapse. It's happened before all across the world at different times. So his filter choices are quite different than mine and yours are going to be different for you. Everyone has a unique need where they want to be. If you are a nomad and you want to be near your children, this will determine where you want to end up, whether it's in a city or a small town. You may be willing to endure the danger for the sake of your loved ones. 
And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's your decision because you love them. This is all good for thought. I mean, with this information offered in this episode, you can begin thinking about where you prefer to be if and when a disaster of any magnitude strikes. It might not be a financial collapse or a social breakdown. It could be an invasion from another country, EMP strike, pandemic, or any number of scenarios. It's not a perfect world, and we are not immune to problems just because we live in the United States, if you are in the United States. So after thinking about factors that are unique to your needs, you can make an intelligent decision and work from there. All over the world, I have viewers from all over the world, so this implies to everybody. Next time, I'm going to discuss more information about preparation just in case something happens, forcing people to flee their locations. And that's for all of you all across the globe. Evictions are at an all-time high in the United States, and I want to continue talking about preparing for that time. If it's in your future, it's better to be prepared. Now, I don't want to scare you. I'm not fear-mongering, but I do want to bring this up because news... Um, in mainstream, in, in other types of news, and on videos, it, it seems weird out there. And I want everybody to kind of like have some sort of a plan. It's always good to have a plan. So until next time, everybody, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Um, I'm just uh, bearing the heat today. It looks like it's going to rain out here. I love you guys a lot. And um, let's get prepared. Get a notebook and start writing down and talk to your family about all these things. I love you. Bye.